Okay. Um, so this is uh, an update to the instrument to, to MIDI patch. What it adds is pseudo polyphony. Um, so right now I am using one note that I play on my guitar to control three voices in the Volca FM. It can do up to four voices, but the FM only has three voices, and I decided to use it to demonstrate. I think, you know, three is a perfectly fine number. Um, I've grafted on some controls from my strum patch, and so it can do a couple of interesting things. The closer this number, the strum spread is to zero, the more those notes play as a chord. But as you uh, spread that out some, they'll, they'll fade in. You can use uh, the master gate so that when you stop playing the note, uh, all of the voices will cut off at the same time, which can be a cool effect. Just note that if you disengage this before uh, the notes have actually cleared the, the CV delay network, uh, they'll, they'll sound, it'll make a sound. Um, this defines the range, uh, for the, the notes, or you can use, uh, this button, which is called set notes, and these value modules above each note can be set to a specific note, uh, that will play, uh, that relationship, that interval to the root note, uh, as long as it's within the scale, it still passes through the quantizer stage, uh, and so, you know, it will take those values, and if they are out of scale, it should quantize them into something that is in scale, so you can play chords that are always in your key and scale, uh, if you want. Uh, about that, I've described this a little bit, but essentially, if you look at this light, it'll change colors as you change the different scales of the quantizer. Um, so green is major. Uh, red is harmonic minor, uh, blue is chromatic, and the other two are the other two minor scales that I can never remember the exact names of. Um, so, you know, uh, you can control what scale you play in, and you can set what key you play in, and again, I, I go over this some in my strum video, but the way that this control works is that, uh, each of these notes actually is, has the, the control has been scaled up in such a way so that as you change from A to A sharp zero, the key of the quantizer changes to A sharp, uh, and it proceeds in this fashion through the first octave. Uh, and once you exceed G sharp one, everything else is G sharp because it, it's all coming in as a value, a CV value of one. Uh, to the quantizer, but I thought this was a maybe slightly more convenient way to, to dial in the, the uh, key of the quantizer. The other option is you can turn on this button, which is called pitch track, and it will just uh, adjust the, the key of the quantizer to whatever key you're playing in, uh, uh, to whatever key, to the key of the note that you're, you're playing. Um, so it'll, it'll track your pitch essentially, uh, but it will also for the, the notes above that pitch or, or added to that pitch, uh, it will, um, quantize them to, to the scale that you've chosen. So you could go from, uh, C minor to D sharp minor because you're playing, uh, uh, you know, a D sharp on the, the guitar that may or may not work for you um, but you know it, it's an option uh, each of the voices can be muted uh, which is sometimes fun 
when you're using the, the strum because you can set up different orders that the notes play in. So again, I only have three voices to work here, work with here, but I can, you know, change how they're distributed. Uh, and if I had a four voice synth, I could use all four. And again, if you're not interested in these sorts of strumming patterns, um, you know, it works perfectly fine just playing chords. Uh, aside from that, there is a control for sensitivity that controls a noise gate. Uh, and uh, it precedes the onset detector and the, the envelope follower that are used to provide a lot of the, the dynamic performance of, of the uh, voice. Uh, there's a legato switch. When it's off, legato is off. And that means... Uh, the envelopes will re-trigger uh, or the gate will re-trigger with each... Uh, onset that's detected by the patch when you turn that off that's disabled so um, it's useful I think if you want to uh, you know play the legato passages I guess uh, you know and if you want to play faster you might try the the non legato legato off I forget what it's called when you play without legato normal playing um and then there's a velocity off and on switch you may or may not want velocity uh you know it will add dynamics to the performance but it will also make it more inconsistent so there's a, a trade-off there um and then on the second page uh you have your your midi information um, so these are the, the mini notes out. They're, they're by default set to channel one. This is where you would change that. Uh, and you have your audio in and out. Um, the audio from the synth does not feed back into the Zoya. It was a CPU casualty. Um, but also, you know, when you're working with poly synths, you, you are more than likely to be using a, a stereo output from the synth. And since one of the inputs is reserved to analyzing the incoming audio, you couldn't process both of the outputs of the synth at the same time. Uh, so that was, I think, for me, a pretty easy choice to make. This is sort of a specialty patch, you know. Um, uh, the expression pedal is still mapped to uh, the, the mod wheel of the synth. You can change that here if you want and again change the channel that it's directed to. Uh, and there's still a hold function. Which should become pretty apparent when you use it. I made it latching this time around. Um, if you wanted to change that, let me find the stomp switch. Where is, it? is this the stomp switch? Yes. If you wanted to change that, um, I will move that to this page as well. So if you wanted to make it momentary, it could be momentary. Um, and the whole... works as a sustain. Notes ring out until you turn it off. Uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, that's all I've got there. Uh, now, obviously, we wait for, for Brock uh, to make a much better demonstration of the value of this patch than I ever could. Thank you. Mm -hmm.